Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and this month I'm covering some of my favorite ensembles from the Reactor User Library. Today I'll be going over Color Strip by Igor Shailov, better known as Sonic Twist, who later went on to do all of the programming for the Twisted Tools ensembles. This is a pretty awesome little ensemble. I'll just uh, give you a little sound sample to start out. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with a new reactor video every week and a whole host of other stuff as well. So, Color Strip is a loop mangling ensemble. And as such, the first part of the interface to go over is this um, sample display we have here with the eight color coded boxes distributed along the x axis. And these represent eight different playback methods for our sample. So we'll use the x axis to control which position we're playing back. And you can left click and drag to do that or you can right click to get a fine control. And immediately below that we have these six different boxes that we can use to set different playback parameters for each of the eight playback methods we have. So if we uh, change the purple strip um, in the pitch box, that's going to change the pitch of the kick drum sound that I have set up here. And we also have the grain controls, um, panning controls, the speed of the playback, and a release time, which we'll go over a little bit later. Um, and so these are the parameters that we can affect to change the playback of our sound. And at the bottom of each of these, we also have these handy sliders that control the maximum and minimum values for each parameter. And so by changing these, we can change the pitch of all eight of our boxes at once um, and get some really cool effects. Okay, in the lower right hand corner we have the random and reset area we can use to either randomize or reset all of these values. And we have these six boxes um, to the right of that that we can use to decide exactly which parameters are going to be affected by a given function. Alright, so let's go over the sequencing section next. We have access to eight different sequences. And to create one is very simple. You can just draw in um, our little area here. We have a 32 step sequence that um, you just can draw in the various colors of our boxes to decide which um, sample playback method is being used at any given point in time. We also have two different uh, modes here. We have the sequencing mode, which I've been using so far, and manual mode, which is good for using when you're um, setting up sounds. And when manual mode is active, you can choose which sequence we're programming by um, changing the value in the uh, knob directly to the right of it. This can be a value from 1 to 8. You can use the bar at the top here to choose which part of the sequence is currently being looped. Uh, 
and regardless of how long the sequence you have set up is, it will play back for a total of 32 notes. So earlier we had it set to 16 step sequence and it just looped through it twice. But now that it's 32 steps, it'll just loop one time when we set it to sequence mode. And to change which sequence is playing back automatically, we can use the sequencing section. Um, so we can control the length of the sequence using the green bar at the top and the um, knobs directly beneath control which sequence is being played back at that time. Alright, so each sequence has a completely different setup for all the six parameters at the bottom, the positions of our playback, etc. And, you know, going back and recreating all this information, if you want to have a very similar but different loop, is kind of a pain in the ass. So fortunately, uh, we have this copy-paste function at the top here, which copies all of the information that we have in a given sequence and pastes it into a new one. Another cool little function is that we can use the Y values of these um, markers in the sample looper to control the volume by using the Y to volume control. And we can also use the Y values to modulate any of the six parameters below by turning on these boxes here. And directly beneath the modulation routing, we have an envelope that we can use to affect all of the um, playback points if we would like by turning up the envelope A knob here. And we have the attack and decay and separate release times for each uh, sample playback point. Alright, and uh, finally, this being a loop mangling ensemble, you kind of want to be able to load your own sounds into it. So you can do that by pressing F9 or pressing the sample map editor button in the upper right hand corner here. And from there, you can either load your own sample map from the sample map menu or add individual audio files using the add button. Uh, if you add your own individual files, make sure that the root, the L, and the H parameters for each of your files is identical. And then you can use that number to um, control which sample is being loaded with the sample knob right here. <laughs> Alright, so this is a free ensemble from the Reactor User Library. I'll give you a link in the video description. Uh, once again, this is Salamander Anagram from ReactorTutorials.com. If you like this video, please check out our website. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back again next week with another Reactor tutorial.